Good morning, good afternoon, hello my photography friends and welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Mullins, I'm a documentary photographer based in the United Kingdom. So today I am going to run you through five, five things that I have got this year that I think couldn't live without is probably a strong word, but things that I absolutely adore. And there is a camera, a book, a computer, a controller, a Lightroom controller, Premiere Pro controller, and also there is a screen calibrator, which I'm very excited about, I have to say. So these five things, I will link to them all below, of course, I am going to run through pretty quickly. It's that time of the year, of course. Um, for those of you that celebrate the holidays, happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy everything else, uh, wherever you are. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is my beloved uh, X100V. So the X100V, of course, is a Fujifilm camera. It's the latest in the lineup from Fujifilm for the uh, fixed lens 23mm compact point and shoot type camera if you like. I've adored the X100 range ever since it was first released back in 2011 I think. So uh, it's kind of the 10 year anniversary very soon and Fujifilm UK actually have been doing a, a really cool competition to win a limited edition. Um, now this camera is beautiful because it's pocketable and I'm not going to go into the tech details and all of that kind of stuff because there's plenty of that on the internet. What you have to know about the X100V though is that it's very different to all of the other versions of the camera. Uh, and by that I mean the lens, okay? So the X100, the X100T, the X100S and the X100F, which are the first three variants, X100, X100T, X100S, X100F, four variants, this is the V of course, the fifth one, uh, had a fixed lens, 23mm lens, that was designed in 2011. It was designed for the original 16 megapixel sensor. And of course now they're up to something like 26 megapixels. And so for the X100F specifically, it was quite soft at certain areas, certainly when it was wide open at f2. So they redesigned the lens completely on the X100V and it is marginally, marginally, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit bigger. Um, but the, the actual design itself overall is much better. The lens is sharper, it's quicker. The autofocus is the same as the one you're gonna find in the X-Pro3 and the X-T3, etc., etc. Uh, not gonna be quite as quick as those cameras though because of, of the fixed lens itself. But what I love about the camera is obviously the JPEGs that it produces. And I did a video recently actually about all of my favorite JPEGs uh, for the newer range of cameras. Uh, I'll link to that above and you can check that out. But the images straight out of the camera are beautiful. And if you're a JPEG shooter and you enjoy JPEGs and you don't enjoy going onto the computer and Lightroom and all that kind of stuff, then this kind of camera is perfect for you. Now, this is the first of the breed, if you like, that has a flip out screen. So it has a, uh, a really nifty actually tilt screen on the back that when it closes, it's very flush, you can hardly see it. You just can't see it at all. It's, it's, it's totally flush with the camera. Now, when they first started talking about putting a flip out screen in the X100, I was like, oh, no, my beloved X100, don't want a flip out screen. I, I never really wanted it. But when the designs came through and we looked at it and I thought, wow, actually they've done a really, really nice job of it. For those of you that don't want the flip out screen, you just don't need to, you just ignore it, just pretend it's not there. Um, the other thing about the X100V that I really like now is the 4K video capabilities. Again, the same capabilities that you can find in the X-T3, uh, X-Pro3, X-T3. Now the 4K filming is not gonna be quite the same in terms of the uh, length of time you can film and other kind of core features, but it produces pretty nice, nice stuff actually. I created, uh, I'm not gonna show it today, but I will show it, I will show it perhaps in my next video. I created a one minute horror film for the kids. They were, they were tasked with making a, a promo film for a movie and, uh, and we did it and uh, it's quite spooky really, but I'll share that another time. And that was all done on the X100V. So yeah, X100V is my camera of the year, if you like, for myself. Um, I love it, I prefer the black version. There is a silver version available as well. Next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is a book. Now, this is a book called We Are Like Air by Ziza Cruz Bacani. And uh, Ziza Cruz Bacani is, she's a fellow Fujifilm ambassador. She is a documentary photographer of extraordinary talents. She was voted uh, onto the BBC 100 Women of 2018, I think, 
We recently had her on the FujiCast podcast. Now, if you haven't listened to the FujiCast podcast, again, I'll link to that below and all over the other places. Uh, it's a podcast that myself and Neil run. Uh, Neil James, good friend of mine, and we have a guest every week. And Zyza was on there a few weeks back. So my book, we are like, yeah, um, it's a very personal book. It's uh, about my family. It's about the story of my mother and migrant workers in Hong Kong. So we are a family of migrant workers. My my father, me, my mom, my brother, almost everyone in the family is a migrant worker. So uh, I've been documenting issues of migration since 2014, before uh, before I became a full-time photographer. I was working as a nanny in Hong Kong for almost a decade. And then I was already shooting, or no, I, I was already photographing street photography uh, since 2009. But then I decided to shift into documentary photography when I've learned that I actually have a story to tell. It really is a beautiful book and I, I think it's one of those books that I sit down and I'll show my daughter and I'll explain, you know what, the world is different in different places, for good, for bad, for whatever reason, it's different. And it's books like this and people like Zyza are putting books like this out that will educate and, and allow us to understand everything else that's going on in different places. Uh, I, I love it. I love the black and whites. I love the, the layout of the book. The form factor is great. I love the uh, the depth of the images, but also the conversational pieces in there. There's kind of handwritten notes, and it's it really is a beautiful book. Definitely one for your bookshelf. Ziza Cruz Bacani, We Are Like Air. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk to you about is this little gadget, which is called <laughs> the Tour Box. Um, and this is actually a little Lightroom Premiere Pro anything really uh, controller. Now there's lots of these types of things available. Um, what I really love about this though is the, the size of it, tiny. And again I'll link to it below. Um, and it's totally customizable. You simply download the software and you can configure it to do whatever you want. So I mostly use it with my uh, laptop and I'm using it for Lightroom and for Premiere Pro editing and it does speed things up quite a lot. So for uh, Lightroom, I like to use it for uh, you know, toggling between exposure, brightness, darks, blacks. Um, I've got one button set to show me the before and after of an image. Uh, it's really cool actually, really nice little piece of uh, software and hardware. Uh, it feels good, it's kind of premium to the touch, but it's not huge, it's not a big old thing. So actually this goes in my camera bag with my laptop and I take it with me when I go home from the studio and, and all those other things. Uh, just pull it out, USB, and boom, away you go. Really, really nice piece of tech like that a lot. Uh, next thing on the list is, uh, well actually let's do the computer next. So, the computer that I bought way back in uh, the beginning of the year, uh, laptop, when the lockdown happened, I knew that I would have to uh, start working from home a lot and I've got a big old unit of a PC in the studio and my wife was like, oh, I don't really want that in the living room. Um, so I invested in a, uh, a new laptop, which was the Dell XPS 15 2020 edition. And, and I have to say, hands down, I have to say that it has been phenomenal. Now, some people, again, I've done a video review of this actual computer, so you can check that out. I'll link to that above as well. Some people have had slight issues with the trackpad, I think, um, but I've had no issues at all, none whatsoever. The screen is beautiful. Everything about this computer is really, really functional. Now, I did top it out. I've got a very high spec one. It's got 64 gig of RAM and it's got one terabyte SSD. My entire business can run on this for sure. I can do all my editing, my Premiere Pro editing. I can do my uh, Lightroom editing. I can do my business. Everything is on here. It's all very cool. Now the one terabyte SSD, uh, you know, it's it, it's not going to be enough to store all of my images on. Um, most of that will just sit on Dropbox and I'll just kind of sync it through the cloud. Uh, it's a really, really beautiful machine to use. It looks nice. And of course, the main thing about this laptop, the selling point, I suppose, apart from the functionality, is the edge-to-edge -edge screen. It is a 15-inch screen, but in a 13 and a half inch body size, I suppose. Uh, the bezels are pretty much impossible. You just don't see them. The screen is superb. It's a 4K screen. And the audio is amazing if you're into audio. And, and I never really watched things like Netflix or anything on laptops before. I just, you know, can plug it in headphones and all that kind of stuff. But of course, as we spent more time at home during the year, 
I was watching a little bit more on this and you know the audio out of it is, is superb the keyboard's amazing the trackpad is huge and I, I honestly cannot fault it I suppose the only thing really that some people might have a little bit of a qualm about is that there's no uh, legacy USB support it's USB-C uh, Thunderbolt and there's three or four um, and they're all power power charging ports so yeah a really really cool piece of technology I love this laptop very very nice indeed battery life is great performance is great everything's good about that okay and the final thing I'm going to talk to you about on the fifth the fifth thing of my uh, gadgets and uh, gear that I've loved this year is this little fella um, now this is called a spider x right it's from x right data color spider x now I actually have uh, my main screen in the studio is a BenQ 32 inch uh, and it's got hardware calibration so I typically use the uh, data color the spider pro system for that however this little thing I, what I like about this is that it's designed to be rapid okay and you will know if you've ever done any cal calibration on your ca on your screens that it's uh, it's all numbers and white points and this and that and everything and you can you know you can fall into a coma watching the videos on calibration on YouTube uh, one of which I did if you want to check that out don't, don't need to fall into a coma watching that um, this one is cool though it's literally plug and play you plug it in you download the software um, I use this again on the laptop typically uh, so again it's nice and small it sits in my camera bag along with the toolbox and I just take it with me everywhere. It reminds me once a month to recalibrate my computer and, uh, and away we go. It's, it's, it's lightweight, it's, it's pretty bright white kind of thing. Uh, you know, design wise, it's not the sexiest of things in the world, uh, but it does the job. It's got a nice little lens cap on the back. So you kind of plug that in and it just sits in the bag. Uh, it's got a weighted cable at the back so you can pull it and tether it accordingly. Uh, you know, you, if, those of you who've been doing calibration for a while will remember the old days when you used to have to kind of use rulers and things to hold up the calibration device. Um, so that's all dealt with. Uh, yeah, and again, I'll link to this below. It's, it's cheaper than the high-end uh, calibration tools. This is something you might want to use on a laptop or on a screen that's not specifically dedicated for your high-end editing. Uh, if your screen has hardware calibration, you want to use the hardware calibration built into it. But yeah, it's uh, it's nice. So they are the five, five which I told you it would be a short video today. Uh, those are the five little gadgets that I love. So we have, in no order particularly, the Data Color Spider X, a uh, nice little calibration tool. We have the beloved, and I have to say beloved, uh, XPS 2020 15 inch edition. There is a 13 inch and a 17 inch. I think the specs are identical, just physically the size is different. Uh, so you might have options there. We have the Toolbox Tech little gadget, and this, actually this and, uh, and the camera are probably the things that I love the most. This is a really neat little thing, I like that a lot. That saves me a lot of time. Then we have the book, of course. Uh, we are like air by Santa Cruz Bacani. Remember the podcast, we have an interview with her and we have an interview with lots of people on there. In fact, last week we interviewed Pete Reed, who's a triple Olympic gold medalist and a brilliant photographer. And he has got one heck of a story to tell. And of course, my camera of choice this year, I think, has to be the X100V. Now, of course, I, I'm not just saying that because I'm a future film ambassador. I have been personally involved with the X100 range for, for a long time, um, including you know, uh, elements of, of, of design and options and various things like that. And it's just, they've taken something that I think is pretty perfect and made it even more perfect. Um, and again, on the Fujicast, we had Masasan, who is the designer, the, the physical designer of the camera. He was interviewed on there as well, so do check that episode out if you are interested in listening to him discuss how his mind works when he's designing cameras and the such. Okay, my friends, that's it. Um, I will hopefully get another video out before the main holiday period starts. Uh, for those of you that celebrate it, have a very happy Christmas if I don't see you before and a great new year. And hey, let's hope that 2021 is a damn sight better than 2020. See you next time.